Monty Simo. You started the stories <laughs> before. You think so? Are you a little worried? Worried about what? Whatever the hell my line is supposed to be. And he's a filmmaker, and this is his latest project. I got you, baby. I got you. The film festival, what can we say? We'd laugh, we'd cry, we'd do it all again. It's diagnosis of his tumor then. Because yep. Jay's not going to live for much longer. We don't know how long. I hope the camera's recorded some of this. <laughs> It was, always, it was always about the fun because I wasn't sure what I was going to pull together or if I was yeah. going to do this. <laughs> so. <sighs> I'm glad to be doing it. I'm not looking into every single possible camera. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Glad they're here. This is a little conversation between us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how long have you been making films? I honestly don't know, but I think it's 2000 or something like that. It just, you'd think I'd know 99 or 2001, but I think it could be 2000 or 2001. So 20 years. Was, yeah. And I think everybody's made films in high school or junior high, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. The first one I did was with Jason and Tavis, and that was, I don't know, now 20 years ago. And what got you started into it? Um, Especially if you're in university already. Yeah, it was, uh, I like to write. It's always come from writing. So I would write, and not just fiction, just anything, and I wrote... A character study is what it was of nine or so different characters and I really liked the characters and they had nothing to do with each other so I came up with a narrative of a train that's derailed or not derailed but been delayed mm -hmm. and there's all these characters then lumped into a cafe and then there's the server who I must I must have been a flight attendant at the time actually okay yeah and there was a server who knew all of these stories, so that narrated the story. Right. And I kind of, when I pieced that together, I thought it would be good for students to use as a writing piece. So then you would grab one of these characters, whichever one you wanted, and you would tell their backstory or what happens when they get on the train or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's where the name Starter Doe came. Okay. And the idea was, is it was for um, kids. It's a starter dough piece, yeah. which is kind of fun because it was the first film. So it really was starter totally. dough to get yeah. going. When, I, when you told me that was the name of it, I was like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. And I'm sure I will be jumping up lots through when we're chatting. But this one sits right up here. And that is starter dough. Okay. And that's when we, that was the technology when we made starter dough. Yeah. So that's how we would distribute it. And how many, or where did you show it, or what did you do once you'd made it? Well, tell me a bit more about what it was like to make it and pull it together. And why Tavis and why Jason? Um, so I wrote it and I gave it to Jay to read. And I thought it was a one-act play. I thought it was going to be that sort of thing. And not that we had any experience with that either. And uh, he said something about, well, we have to make this. And mm. he saw it as a film. So then, uh, and he was in university at the time too. I think so. Yeah. Actually, I bet you I might've been done university maybe. Mm. I don't, yeah, I would have been done. I would have been done university for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For a while. Um, but Tavis was still in university. Okay. And anyways, Tavis had a camera. Ah, uh, so that's where Tavis is in the group. That's, okay. Yeah. At least at first, like Tavis contributed so much more, but at first he had a camera and an extra person. Yeah. To, and so talk to me a bit more about Jay. Well, what's fun is that's his writing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Jay wrote Starter Dome. Or when I see that, I can totally tell his poor penmanship. <laughs> and he was right from the start, but he was the tech end of it. Okay. So, um... That's what he liked. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the cameras. Yep. The editing. Yep. Writing all along has been collaborative with him. And that's the part I'll miss the most, I think. <laughs> you're not going to get through it, are you? <laughs> I can tell because you're evading. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, let's talk about Starter Dose more. Let's talk about how you guys got started. So you wrote this piece and Jay's like, let's make it. Yeah. So you just picked a weekend. Walk me through what happened. We had a gazillion bad names. Yeah. Um, but I wanted a business card because we needed a diner to shoot in. Yeah. And I really had fun location scouting, and it's something I was good at. Mm -hmm. And so I was in Brooks. We almost filmed in Brooks. A couple of diners there, and I got permission to take photos just to scout. Yeah. And that's, and again, that's film photography back. But uh, we'd go into a diner and shoot and shoot and shoot and trying to just get permission from many different places. And then got it from... Um, Rock and Robins, I think is what it was called at the time, in Red mm -hmm. Deer. And it's the, the Gasoline Alley Highway stop. Yeah. And Jason was working there at the time as why. And the main character, second main character, something like that. A key character, either the one I played or the one Dustin plays, mm -hmm. um, was the manager. Okay. And the manager just on the spot, kind of, oh, I'm too tired, or I'm not going to do it now, or probably the nerves I had setting up and rolling here, mm -hmm. and just bailed. And it was our very <laughs> first film thing, and it was the very first experience, and that's got to be a, a hallmark thing of Undone Films, is the idea of getting it done, pushing through, of whatever is in the background, we just finally left, and whether one of these is out of focus or whatever, you just eventually have to go yep. with it. And so that was our moment, and we didn't know it was quit, you know, easy, quit, go have pizza, or roll, and didn't know what we're doing at all. Shot, and why I say we didn't know what we're doing is we knew what the script was, and all the actors were just found people in the restaurant while it was <laughs> open. So do you mind doing this? You're playing a character that's a coffee sniffer? So just bring it up to your nose and set it down again. I just want you to do this. I don't want you to say anything or I want you to wear these headphones and I want you to rock out. Or, yeah. And I don't believe any of the characters have lines, right? Um, so, and I shouldn't say that. Like, I think Jay plays a character. Terry plays a character. Tavis plays a character. You know, anybody we could get, but there's yeah. a fair bit there. So the people that we, that aren't family are complete strangers that right. are in it. Yeah. And it just reminds me of how we weren't telling a story through cinematography we didn't understand why you would move the camera or what any shot means versus another shot yeah and we went to i don't think i have the award for it oh actually we probably didn't win an award we went to our first film festival with that film which was the red deer film festival mm -hmm. and a different story is we made a film at that film festival right. actually yeah but a little tongue-in-cheek yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a mockumentary of sorts. Yeah. We've heard that Robert Redford actually is making an appearance. Have you heard that rumor? Or can no, you confirm I haven't. That? No? No. Uh, no, I haven't. No? I have no idea. No. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. We've heard that Robert Redford's in town. No. Not Robert, not THE Robert Redford. THE Robert Redford. I cannot confirm or deny anything. I'm not at liberty. So well, I'm not denying it. I can't confirm that, no. No. I uh, could have. I wouldn't know. Like, I don't even really know what he looks like these days. Do you have any we asked lead on that? He, we asked he might come. Yeah. But, you know, don't hold your breath. Uh, all I can say is if Robert Redford was in town, I wouldn't know about him. Yeah, well, Robert nice. phoned me. He did? Yeah, well, we call him Bobby. We did. I'm pretty sure I saw him. You saw Robert? Where did you see him, sir? He, he denied that he was Robert Redford. It's Robert Redford. But at that festival, we got a really nice bit of praise from a judge who said something to the effect of, great story, great film. You can't have the tripod in the shot. You're yeah. not. And we were doing things like we were filming onto a table of us sitting and the camera would point this way, and this is a giant window. So when the reflection of the window is the whole camera crew and everybody's sitting there. And so it was one of those things where he mentioned it, and Jason, again on the tech, 
Jason went back and he is the one who doesn't know when to say quit almost on a film, I would say. And in a good way. Mm -hmm. He went back and didn't have to like rotoscope or green screen out. He just um, found other shots instead of that shot yeah. where the tripod was in it and re-edited the whole thing and yeah. it looked great. Yeah. Another re-edit he's done on, I can't remember which film, was there was a pop, an odd pop every time the record happened or the edit and he went each individual cut and turned down the volume for a fraction of a second at the end of every clip. Nowadays it's a one button you hit and it cleans it up. Yeah. But just meticulous work like that he would do yeah. on them. So... So you got your start. You got hooked. Yeah, I think. And did you think this could be your career? Never, I don't think. So it's just always for fun. I think so. Maybe there was some dreams. Maybe if we thought it was going to be career, we would have thought it was going to be um, something that would pay the bills and we could mm. enjoy doing. But never really thought of it as a Hollywood kind yeah. of thing. I, at least I think of that as an actor right. I'd be an actor and I'll go to Hollywood maybe that's because I've received the most accolades for acting than than actual filming or whatever but never really it was the idea was fun it, the very next film then so right after that we did closing 24 hours right um, which is that poster there yes and that one was the first one we received a grant for wait was it I don't recall. Again, that's why I need to be with Jay kind of for it. Because again, he's that detail. You yeah. know what I mean? Somewhere along the way, it was that film or it was Man on the Mast, which was probably our third or fourth film. Uh, and how often are you pumping them out at this stage in your lives? You mm -hmm. guys are both sing or well, just out of university, got some free time. Are we Minimum of one year. Right. Okay. And that would be a pretty good that was, average that we were... Yeah. Yeah, so. And talking about it, starting to gather some equipment. Yep. Starting to sort of formalize everybody's roles. Exactly. Yeah. Really started to come together. And that's kind of when I would say the formation of Undone Films. And that's when yeah. Tavis found himself a role yeah. in the trio. Um, and it was really good. And I definitely, as a role, I would write. Yeah. The three of us would work filming together. And then the three of us would edit. And, and any time you read about making early movies or first movies, often you're told not to collaboratively edit. Like have somebody review your work. But we would actually all three sit at the computer yeah. and almost get hands in there. Not as much me. I would ask for things, but I wouldn't yeah. be um, punching the keys per se. And yeah, we solidified that and then just... A few grants, and the grants really legitimized it, it felt like. Somebody yeah. read the script and thought it was good, and then we actually got money to hire actors, or and it felt good to give back to the actors and so on. You um, did 20, or closing 24 hours or Man in the Mask go to festivals? Almost everything we had, we when, tried to get to, to, get to get festivals. festivals. Yeah. Um, but when we did festivals, we're talking a couple yeah. little local, so we have very, very little. Yeah. Specifically, and I guess Grand Prairie, and that's a good one to mention, mm -hmm. is specifically Grand Prairie, before the Real Shorts Film Festival, had something that a local teacher, Dave Watson, wanted to put together. Mm -hmm. And he kind of speaks about it now very humbly and bashfully that it wasn't much of anything. And it, to be fair to him, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But it was something that happened here. Yeah. And it was the only avenue I had at the time. Yeah. And that's these awards here, which just look pretty and are fun. But it's these things. I don't know which one of them is for a, uh, 2006, 2000. Yeah, that's even better because both years are here. So that's 2005 and 2006, and that's 2005. Um, and it's... Maybe audience choice. I can't even remember yeah, how it I happened. Think so, yeah. yeah, and you were there, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um. And I think these are up. One, this one particularly is just a good prop. But <laughs> it is, isn't it? Like that yeah, should go on the prop in. shelf. Yeah. 
Um, there's something about, I don't know, maybe even the fact that it's the Lions Festival on there. Um, that it's not that serious. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I don't have a single real shorts. Um, trophy? Trophy. No. Um, and it would be up. I'd be happy to put it up. You never wrong. won one? Never have won one. That's too bad. No. Starter Joe was a good example, and maybe this film too, is we made that to see if it was going to work. Yeah. And if it worked, then we were going to make it. Right. Then we would get a camera, and then we would get a crew, and then we would get actors, and then we would light, and then we would... Yeah. And, and we agreed, and we did it, and we liked it, and it seemed good. But it felt like, why make it a little bit better when we could do something totally different? Yeah. So then the next one, we did hire actors. And the next one was shot in a gas station. And that was a real adventure. And we had people drive out. Denise and uh, Jean were there for that oh, yeah. one. And we had a tra trailer. We actually had a trailer for people to sleep in because we filmed all through the night and the next day. And I just slept in my car. Yeah. Um, so we were just, like I said, getting our feet under us, but that was, that was, uh, definitely the early days and great days and good memories from that for sure. So, and I think, yeah, by the time we hit coach stories, that's when we hit our stride and we knew what we were doing. So tell me about coach, coach stories. Coach stories. I kind of, kind of that's where I feel like that's when I showed up. Yeah, I guess. Mm -hmm. But you, but you were there for these ones too. I think Coach Stories. Well, you started Coach Stories <laughs> <laughs> before. You think so? Yeah. Because <laughs> I was living in Edmonton. Yeah. Yeah. So Couch Stories was a great concept, and I still really like it. And I want to make other things like it where. Mm. It's a vignette of seven stories. Six of them follow the, all seven, I guess, follow the life of a coach. Mm -hmm. And when the coach is passed on to another person, you know, somebody leaves it at the dumpster and somebody picks it up or whatever yeah. it happens to be. Or in the beginning of the life, somebody affluent, it's a brand new coach, but just doesn't like the style, passes it on so to somebody So when you younger. guys were talking about coach stories, did you already decide to do each your own separate sort of, like that was already That the was the purpose was the of, point. in fact, that's where coach stories started was I didn't, we all wanted to. See what you could do by yourself. You got it. Yeah. And that's why it made such a mark. I feel like Starter Doe got us going. Yeah. Then all these films up to that stage to find who stuff we were and, learning stuff. and yeah. then it was like wait a minute why am i writing they might be much better at writing but i'm not letting it go and it's not and that part for me wasn't collaborative at the time maybe now it would be a lot more yeah especially the editing the the editing wasn't creative in my view mm -hmm. and first. oh yeah you changed your mind since that completely yeah um and maybe it was the lack of skill with it, or I wasn't wanting to take that on. Even camera, funny enough, like I liked, without knowing what the roles were, I liked directing. I liked coordinating people, and I liked talking to the actors and trying to build the story, I guess. Yeah. So they were on camera, and they were on edit. Yeah. Um, and then technical. And Jay, all the way through, that never changed. I never took over... Um, printing stuff so he would make the dvds he would print the dvds design covers all that sort of stuff yeah. Yeah. okay but so you write together well no i write and he supports me yeah um it's not a not i remember hearing seth rogan and i can't remember his writing partner but they sit at a single keyboard and slide it back and forth. Like they really are just, yeah. and I give things for Jay to read. Jay will sit there when I type and I'll say something, or then I'll ask him to be quiet so I can get all these ideas out. And then I'll read something to him or he'll say something that'll feed an idea. Yeah. Um, and when he doesn't say something or he suggests a twist on something, I know it's a bad idea. Yeah. So maybe we don't even massage it. We just cut it. Yeah. But I haven't had that experience close to that experience. And I don't think I will. 
no with anyone else and i think it's that history of growing up together which i guess that is key so sure. from so tell us about yeah. jay and monty's story <laughs>